Some 70% of what's known as discrete manufactured products, that's vehicles, machinery and medical devices for example, are now connected to the internet. They churn out huge amounts of data which can be a goldmine and helping businesses make use of that data is the global technology provider PTC. Today we meet their president and chief executive Jim Heppelman. I'm Angela Corp, welcome to the Business Debate. Jim, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. So just so we understand how you fit into the Internet of Things, tell us about what your company does. Yeah, well, if you think about it, the things uh, in the Internet of Things are manufactured products. So for about three decades, we've been helping tens of thousands of companies use a digital design and engineering approach to create those things. Then in the last five years with our ThingWorks IoT platform, we've helped companies connect those things back to the mothership so that they can gain insights to both improve the design, but as well to optimize the operation and service of those things in the field. Now you've been quoted as saying that the Internet of Things is the defining technological advancement of this era. How much are companies capitalizing on it or not? Well, Internet of Things technologies is a very big deal because it affects the uh, products and offerings that a company puts in the market. It affects the nature of competition. It affects their business processes and operations and can ultimately affect their business model. So in the near term, I think companies are focused most on operational improvements because that's the low hanging fruit. But there's a lot of thought being put into next generation approaches to products and offerings and to business models. You co-authored some research with Harvard professor Michael Porter on the impact that smart connected products are having uh, on businesses. What did you find out about how they're actually changing industry? Yeah, well what's very interesting is that uh, industrial companies are becoming digital or software companies. But if you step back and you look at the nature of an industrial company versus the nature of a software company, they're very different. Different talent, different processes, different cultures, different clock speeds. And what's happening is that industrial companies aren't converting to software companies. They have to convert to a hybrid model where they have one foot in both worlds. And this is a very unnatural place to be. So some specific challenges that people see. Uh, one is that the wall between product development and information technology has to be torn down because we're putting information technology in the products, but the expertise to do that really is in the information technology department. A couple other specific things, companies are adding new departments, new functions like uh, the idea of customer success to proactively monitor the fleet of products out in the market or uh, DevOps to carefully introduce new capabilities into those products that are already out in the market. And then the last thing is uh, many companies are creating a unified data organization to process this data for the benefit of the rest of the company and they're putting in place a chief data officer or sometimes a chief digital officer to preside over that new function. So data seems to be the key driver here. How do we and how do businesses make sense of that data, filter it and gain the insights that they need to from it? Yeah, data is critical. We have this incredible new source of sensor data but we need to combine that source with other sources like uh, automation and control systems, uh, business systems like CRM or MES and even product definition systems like CAD or PLM. So when we bring this data together, we get a complete picture that we can use analytics and simulations to synthesize an understanding of what's really happening. And then we want to package that insight up in different applications for different role players in different settings. So if there's going to be billions of connected things, we're going to need millions of new applications. And so this is really what PTC is focused on. How do we make it easy so that a citizen developer, somebody who's in the business, not necessarily in IT, can quickly put together, using drag and drop techniques, an application that unlocks the power of IoT in their business. Now, when we think of augmented reality, we might be thinking of an amusing filter on Snapchat, but it's actually being piloted in industrial settings now, isn't it? Yeah, IoT and augmented reality fit together naturally, and that's because IoT brings data from the physical world to the digital world, and augmented reality brings data from the digital world back to the physical world. So this is important because uh, the techniques we use to communicate data to humans haven't changed much in 20 or 30 years, but we have more data than ever. So the best way to communicate data to humans is through vision. And if we can take the data, analyze it and find the insights, and then decorate your view of the physical world, either through your phone or tablet, and ultimately through smart glasses like the Microsoft HoloLens, then you simply look at the world and you see in your direct and peripheral vision all of the information that you need to be aware of and to act on. So which industries and functions do you think will see the biggest impact of this sort of technology? 
Yeah, so I'd refer to this McKinsey report published a couple years ago that said uh, by 2025, IoT will generate somewhere between four and $11 trillion of economic value per year. And they ascribe that economic value to nine different settings. Settings are where things operate, so places like factories, work sites, cities, automobiles, homes, and so forth. And uh, it turns out that a full one-third of the value uh, is ascribed to factories. And so this is really the industry 4.0 story, so that'll be a huge place. And if you combine that with work sites and smart cities, you now have more than half of the value. So this is really the environments that have large capital assets that need to be optimized, and it's where PTC is focusing our energy. Jim, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And join us next time on The Business Debate when we'll be looking at artificial intelligence and risk management. Until then, goodbye.